Hello and welcome back to Baking Butterly Love. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make an abstract floral painted cake using a palette knife. Now I do have quite a few other videos about painting with buttercream or painting on buttercream, but it's been a while since I've done a floral painted cake and they're really popular. So I thought it might be a good idea to give you a little more detail on how exactly to use a palette knife. I'm starting off with a crumb coated cake and I'm frosting with Swiss meringue buttercream in this sort of teal aqua-ish color as my background. You definitely don't need this to be perfect since you are going to be painting over it, uh, but I do like to get a nice smooth coat and try to get those sharp edges because I think it looks really nice um, contrasting against those rough edges of the abstract painted flowers. Once I finish the base coat of frosting, I usually do like to chill my cakes and get that frosting firm. But I've had a few people ask me about working in hot climates and people struggling with condensation on their cake. Um, so if you're going to use meringue buttercream and you're, you're working in a hot or humid environment, I would chill just the crumb coated cake, but not the outer layer of frosting. And hopefully that should help you um, avoid the condensation so your cake isn't so cold and then you're pulling it out into a human environment. But you'll just have to be a little bit more careful about how you press the palette knife into the cake. You wanna do it really gently so that you don't mess up that base layer of frosting. All right, so that's how you prep your cake. Then you'll want to get your paint colors mixed up. I always like to use the back of a sheet tray, but you could use any flat surface that works for you. And I'm actually using a caramel Swiss meringue buttercream. So it's got a bit of an ivory hue to it already, uh, but that actually works out for me since I want the colors to be a bit toned down rather than too bright. So I'm gonna start off with a yellow and a pink color. Um, then I'm gonna do some light and dark green. And I'm also going to take a little bit of that yellow and pink and mix them together with some more white to get a nice light peachy color. And then finally, I'm gonna leave a little bit of the white just in case I need it. So these colors are kind of just our starting point, but I'm gonna end up blending them a bit as I go. So I'm gonna be demonstrating the flowers painting directly on the cake for you, but just so you know, I did practice on a plate first, just to get an idea of how I wanted to do things and make sure it was gonna actually work out the way I was picturing it in my head. So first, let's look at the basic flower structure, and then I'll show you some more close-ups of the palette knife. So what I'm doing are really abstract flowers. I'm calling them roses, but I know that might be stretching it a bit, uh, but you know, it's art, so you can call it whatever you want. Anyway, since roses are the inspiration, I'm going to paint these by painting concentric rings of overlapping petals like a rose would have. So I'm starting from the outside of the flower and painting those largest background petals first. And I'm kind of I kind of like to do five-ish petals here. So then for this fl first flower, I kind of went in again with the peach and extended those outer petals just a bit. Then it's just a matter of slowly changing the colors as you work your way towards the center of the flower. I don't worry too much about keeping the colors neat. I actually like to just sort of slowly blend them as I go. Thank you. 
and once you get towards the center it's not as easy to paint the petals in a ring so I actually just kind of start overlapping them um, all in the same direction until I'm happy with how it looks. Then after you get the bulk of the flower done you can go back in with contrasting colors and add highlights and shadows just a little bit of extra color to give the flower a bit more visual interest. Now for the second flower, I decided I'd rather start using the peach color as a background. And also I wanted to try to make the edges of the petals a bit taller, like stick out a little bit more from the cake. So that's kind of the beauty of this painting style. You can really develop the look as you go along. I know the last few flowers I did on this cake were a lot more blended and textured than the first two, but since they're all within the same color palette, they still ended up looking cohesive. All right, so now that you have uh, an idea of the basic flower structure, let's look more closely at using the palette knife. And also, I just wanna say I'm definitely not an expert in this. Um, there's probably tons of other ways to use palette knives, and I only actually have this one little palette knife that I got from my local craft store. But this is just how I've learned to use it, so hopefully you might pick up a few tips. So first, I like to smooth out a little patch of buttercream that's an even thickness. Then I'll scrape the excess off my palette knife, so I'm starting with a clean knife. Then sort of scrape the palette knife sideways along that little patch, and that lets you pick up a nice even amount of buttercream. So hopefully you can kind of see it, but it's nice and even. There's not too much hanging off either side, and it's a little rounded. And I just find that this is a really nice shape to pick up and use for petals. It's nice because it doesn't give you too much of a rough edge. You get a smoother edge on your petals when you use this shape. When you go to apply the buttercream, you have to angle the palette knife so that the buttercream builds up along the edge of your petal and then you just sort of gently scrape away towards the center of your flower. Now you can always go back and add more to a petal if you didn't like the shape or the size of it. And you can also use the tip of the palette knife to scrape away buttercream or to just sort of move or adjust things. And that was with just one color, but don't forget that you can also play around with blending colors. So here I'm blending a bit of yellow with a pink, but I'm not going to mix them completely together. So as I paint this buttercream, it'll create some cool streaks of color in the petal. Also, if you do accidentally pick up too much buttercream, you can actually turn your palette knife sideways and sort of scrape along either side, and that'll get you that tapered shape as well. And there you go, you can see there's just a super subtle streak of color in that petal. So what I was going for was to kind of bridge between the outer pink petals and the inner yellow petals with this blended color. When you get to painting smaller petals, you'll want to pick up less buttercream on your palette knife. So instead of scraping along the whole blade, just scrape along maybe the last third or last quarter of it. You still want to pick up a decent amount of buttercream, you just want to keep the length shorter. And this will really help you get those smaller, shorter petals towards the center of your flower. And a similar idea applies if you want to add highlights. Just pick up a very small amount of buttercream on the very tip of your palette knife. Then instead of pressing the whole thing down like you would for the petals, you can sort of gently scrape the tip of the palette knife along the petals where you want to add a bit of contrast.
So overall, just have fun with this technique. It's better to actually aim to have flowers that are a bit messy rather than too neat. Because I think if you try to make them really neat and even, it makes any imperfections really obvious. Whereas if you keep it really rough and abstract, that all that texture looks a lot more intentional. And once you have your flowers done, adding in leaves and fillers really helps complete the look. So for the leaves on this cake, I used a similar technique that I did with the petals, but I just dragged the palette knife in sort of a different direction. I dragged it away from the tip and that creates sort of just a little bit of a point on the leaf. I used a lighter green for the main part of the leaf, and then I went back in with just a tiny bit of darker green for an accent. So what I did, I just picked up the tiniest sliver of darker green on the edge of the palette knife, and then pulled that straight down the middle of each leaf. I also had a lot of white buttercream left over, so I decided to do some little dots all around the cake. For these, I just picked up the buttercream on the very tip of my palette knife and I basically tapped it onto the cake. I only really dragged the palette knife a little bit, um, but not too much. I didn't want to pull so much like I did with the petals. I wanted them to stay more dot shaped, if that makes sense. And finally, I thought a beaded border would really help polish off the cake. So once I got it on my cake stand, I used a small round tip to pipe that around the base. If you want to pipe a beaded border, it's really easy. What you do is you just pipe small dots and drag away from each dot as you start to release the pressure on the piping bag. And make sure each dot overlaps the tail of the previous one, then just work your way all around the cake. All right, so I hope you guys liked this cake and I really hope you got some better views of how to use the palette knife. Like I said, I'm not an expert and I'm just working with this one little palette knife, um, but hopefully this gives you some ideas on how to learn to use the palette knife. And if you get a set, you can play around with all the different shapes and make some really cool paintings. Don't forget to check out my other painted cake tutorials. I'll leave those linked below. And if you wanna see more painted cakes, leave a comment and let me know. Um, let me know what you'd like to see or just if you wanna see more painted cakes. And I will definitely make those videos for you because they're really fun to make. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.